Today, we're making beach themed items for your home. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. We're gonna start off with a seahorse wreath. Dollar Tree has some amazing stuff right now. I'm gonna use some nautical rope, both the little, the soft one, and then the rough one that's brown. I'm gonna use some of this meshy ribbon, some netting, some of these pieces of sea glass, a willow pick, and this gorgeous, salty and happy seahorse sign from Dollar Tree. And here is a placemat. It is like a wicker kind of placemat. I got it at Goodwill. We're gonna start by removing the hanger on the seahorse, putting a piece of tape right over the backside, and then we're gonna use a little bit of this spackling from Dollar Tree to just fill in that hole. Very simple, easy to do. Whatever's left, you can put right back in the little jar. All right, I want to know I already know that I want this to be dimensional. So I'm gonna use these little blocks, these building blocks from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna put these on the back. And this is going to allow us something to glue it down to, but still have some room so that we can tuck little goodies along the way as we decorate this beautiful wreath. So once we get the blocks down, we're going to put some glue on them and place it down on the mat. This is a square place mat, and I decided that the diamond shape would be exactly what would be fitting for this beautiful little salty and happy sign. So here's some options for you. You can just use the cotton type nautical rope if you wanted to, or you could layer it with a little bit of this rougher, it's more like jute rough rope around the outside, or you could just use one or the other. Or a little idea is you could twist these together like I'm gonna do. It's easy enough. You're gonna take those little tape sections. They are taped on the ends. I'm gonna use clamps to help me hold it in place until my glue is dried. And then I'm just going to begin twisting these ropes together. Trying to keep in mind as I'm twisting to make sure that the distance between them is equal, meaning that the size of the twist is about the same for every twist. That's easy to do, right? You can use clamps along the way to help you hold them down if you would like. Now I'm just gonna tighten it up a little bit and go ahead and glue this down on the corner bottom of the placemat. It's gonna hold it in place here. And then any place that it is going to be touching the mat, I just roll it up a little, add some glue, and then roll it right back down and hold it on there. I'm using Gorilla Glue for all of the projects today. I'm gonna continue around in any place that it is going to be touching to add the glue. And then we're gonna do the same thing into the corners. If you need clamps to help you hold things in place, go ahead and grab some clamps and you can definitely get metal or plastic clamps at Dollar Tree. And of course, uh, I use Dollar Tree items, but I'm not sponsored by Dollar Tree in any way. I just like to give you beautiful decor on a budget and going to Dollar Tree and getting thrift items is the way to do it. And it brings me joy to share these things with you. So I hope that it brings you some joy. Okay, once we're all the way back to the beginning starting place, I'm going to use some clear tape and I'm going to wrap it around my rope. I'm gonna do this to both of these because we need to trim them and I don't want them to fray. So doing it this way keeps them nice and tight on the ends. I'm just going to use my little cutters here to cut this off. You can certainly use scissors, but it's awful thick and I don't want to ruin my scissors. I'm going to glue those two right back together. And yours may or may not look like this. Depends on the size of the placemat you use, obviously. But trim it down to where you need to trim it. I'm going to do the same thing with this brown rope. I'm going to cut it and get it on both sides and then twist it around to the back. It's gonna overlap where the other two are joined. And I'm gonna use a good amount of hot glue here to hold this in place. You can clamp it until it is perfectly in place if you would like. Now, just to make sure that I have it on here snugly, I'm gonna you know, use the backside and I'm gonna take my little glue gun and go right around the jointing between the wood and the rope 
to make sure this doesn't go anywhere. So now I want to do a little something with the seahorse. Um, we're going to make this a girl seahorse. And it already came with the little, the little metal star here. So I'm going to add that back, but in a little bit different of a position. And then I'm going to layer it with one of these little starfish that comes in a three pack from Dollar Tree. And I think this is called the Shoreline, maybe. Um, it's that product line at Dollar Tree. They have got some beautiful things. I'm gonna use this willow pick and cut it down. This comes in a variety of colors. So if you chose to use a different sign besides the seahorse, you can certainly get something to coordinate. I think there's a big variety um, at most stores right now. Love this meshy ribbon. I don't know what that stuff is, um, but wow, it really looks like coral. All right, now I always like to do a dry run. Y'all know this. I like to place things down before I glue them. I don't want to make them permanent until I'm sure. So I just kind of toy around with the placement. I was able to cut this pick into five pieces and one piece I'm going to trim down and make into a shorter piece so that we have six pieces. I'm gonna make some little ribbon bunches here or uh, mesh. I guess we could, we could probably just call this mesh, right? So I'm gonna take this mesh, bundle it up about an inch from the bottom, and I'm gonna take some of my jute and tie it off. I'm gonna use a double knot, and this way it doesn't slip. And I'm just gonna take sections of this mesh to make little, mm, maybe to kind of mimic seaweed or coral. You'll see in just a minute. So I'm gonna measure off about 10 inches. I'm gonna grab my ruler here for you. And it's about 10 inches, but you can do yours longer or shorter. If you get it too long though, it's gonna kind of flop away and you don't want that to happen. You want it to stay close to your project that you're working on. I'm gonna take another piece of that jute. And you know, if you're the kind of person like me who saves everything, this would be a great time to go into that stash where you've removed all those little uh, jute hangers from your Dollar Tree items in the past. Pull that pile out and use those on this project. How about that? That'll save you even more money. So I'm just going to continue to do this until I get four different segments. Once I get the knot in both little ends, I'm going to cut underneath and leave about, you know, an inch on the bottom of it and then trim down my jute so that I have doubled sections. So now I have the beige underneath and the white on top. You can layer any colors that you like. I think there is a white, a cream, a beige, brown, and green. Those are the ones I've found so far, but feel free in the comments to let me know if you found any other colors besides those. Help us all out. And of course, different stores have different, you know, supplies and and different things so it kind of varies if you have the opportunity to go to more than one dollar tree you might want to do that when you are hunting for your goodies to make your projects mmm coffee okay so there are our five pieces and I think I want them to lay down here so you can either start by gluing right down on your placemat and if you're going to use a regular if you're looking for a placemat, you don't find one that's thrifted, you're going to need to buy one that is sturdy enough that you can hang it on the wall. Sturdy enough that you can glue things to it and it's not gonna flop around. So getting something like wicker or wood is a really good option. Something with some thickness, I guess you could say. So now I'm just going to either glue onto the, the placemat and then lay it down, or I'm gonna put a little bit on the pick and lay it down. You can do it either way. Be sure you protect your fingers if you're going to choose to do it this way, just to make sure that you don't hurt yourself. I don't want anybody having accidents when you're supposed to be enjoying the projects. Okay, so I like this so far. It looks good. It definitely looks like plant life in the ocean. So I'm just gonna take my little wire cutters and trim these down. And now we have two smaller ones. I can make it even on both sides. You don't have to though, and you could certainly use more picks than just the ones, you know, just the one that I used, and you can use a bunch of different colors and really make it look tropical and gorgeous because we all know that the ocean life is beautiful and colorful. 
So now I'm going to start working with these little pieces of mesh. You can twist it like that to kind of give it that seaweed look if you wanted to. Or you can just kind of make it look wavy in there. And I know that I want to have mine open up like this, so I'm going to stretch it out just enough that I know I'll be able to show both the beige underneath or the cream underneath and the white on top. It's just going to give more dimension to our project instead of it just being something that's flat like a sign. I really want this to be like a wreath. So I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to take a stick, just a little, um, you know, I get all kinds of stuff like this at Goodwill, so it's just a scrap of some sort and poke it in there. It's going to go under there because we raised it up off the placemat and now we have the little gaps that we can tuck things under, which really brings it more to life. I know crafters use the term dimension a lot, but it really does. It gives you shadows, it gives that extra interest, and it gives you more space to work in so that your otherwise flat project, flat projects can be lifted up. And I think it looks really nice. Hey, if you wanted to, you could even take some Dollar Tree string lights and go underneath the seahorse, and that would light it up. Wouldn't that be pretty? We're going to be working on some more lighted projects shortly though, so hang in there. Alright, so I'm going to continue along and just tuck these back and forth where I want them, add hot glue where I want them, and so that they will stay in place. And I like the look that maybe he's kind of hiding in the coral, maybe he's finding some protection in there. Seahorses are little, little guys, so you know we want to make sure that they feel safe in their home. All right, now I'm just going to pull these down a little bit, kind of have them hanging off just a bit. I like the look of it. It's cute like that, I think. But you do it any way that you like. So I've got this little bag. Now, these little twisty things, uh, along with some other stuff, it's like a table scatter. And I believe it came originally from the at-home store. But I got it at Goodwill and put it all in a plastic bag. So I have these to use on all my projects. And these quite nicely pull apart and they they're they're short and shrunk down and then you can pull them carefully and they kind of unwind a little bit this is really cool now some other options for you to make little puffs of coral or little wispy pieces is to cut a couple of sections and then rather than dovetail them you want to cut them in the opposite direction so that they're kind of rounded instead of having a little uh, like a V cut in it, you're going to round it out instead. Fold it in half, bunch it up, add some glue, protect your fingers of course, and then hold it in place. Give it just a minute to dry and then you can lift your finger up and it'll stay right there. All of these little extra pieces just give it more dimension, they give you something more to look at, they give your eye something else to wonder over. And I love that about crafting because we can make things our own. I'm going to continue to tuck around here and there. Now I've got the beige. Some pieces are going to be doubled. Some are going to be single. It's going to give us a nice variety. Recently, I got a comment from a, um, somebody who was watching that says I talk too much. So that's interesting. Um, and I do apologize if anybody thinks that I talk too much. I like to communicate with my viewers and subscribers and have had so many people say that they appreciate that about me. So I'm going to keep doing what I do here because I'm always going to try to stay true to myself but give you guys what you want. So continuing along, I've added an eyeball. There was two little circles. Um, this is the eyeball. There were two of these little marbles in that bag of sea glass which was awesome because I didn't know they would be there and it makes the perfect little eye. I just decided that maybe she needed a little something else up there on her head so we're gonna give a little I think that makes it perfect look at that there's a shell that used to be an ornament it's kind of iridescent I've added that and that little poof back there I think that looks pretty now I'm gonna take the sea glass that in the colors that I like which is the white and the kind of that seafoam green color and I'm going to add those in there just kind of lay them around those little wicker balls which by the way came from Dollar Tree 
and I'm going to glue these pieces in here and there. And then I'm going to add in these little cone looking things. Look like cornucopias. I don't want everything to be matchy matchy on both sides. I want it to be kind of wild and random. And just add those down. You know, this one's hanging over the edge a little bit, and I like that. And then I found just these were in somebody's Christmas, uh, like Christmas ornaments. They were um, these and a bunch of other little Christmas things, I think, at Goodwill. And so I picked up all of these because I thought these are perfect for little bubbles. Don't they look good for bubbles? I did a mermaid wreath and I used um, some little ornaments that were similar to this. Um, I will try to link that mermaid wreath. It was from, I believe, last year, maybe the year before. It is really pretty. And if you like this kind of beachy or, you know, ocean type of thing, I think you'll really love that little wreath. And they do look like bubbles to me. Again, more dimension. Then you got the shininess from the little pearly bubbles. And you know the pearls, pearls are in the ocean, right? I think it's perfect for that. But you do you, you do what you want. You can also get the little table scatter that's like in silver and white and blue and white. And you could use something like that on there and that would look nice. I'm just continuing to look at this piece from all sides, all directions and add in wherever I feel like I want to add something in. I'm going to add some more glass down here on the tail. And just tuck those pieces around. And one more little poof underneath the end and glue it down. Not bad, not bad. Now we're going to make a hanger. This is very simple. I've got about eight inches of jute here. Recycled jute. I'm just going to tie a knot pull the knot down tightly and then we have a hanger. I'm going to put it in the top tip and then use some of my glue. I put the glue under it. I'm going to add glue over it as well and then a little piece of scrap cardboard right on top. And this is this beautiful little seahorse wreath. Oh, she's gorgeous. She's just stunning. Next project is a starfish jar lantern. And we actually have two of these. So I found these in that same shoreline or shore, whatever, section at Dollar Tree. These beautiful little lanterns or jars. Continuing with the glue sticks, you're going to need something like this if you're gluing on glass or you want to switch over to something like um, fix all adhesive, super glue. E6000 to glue onto glass. I know that I want to put these on. I tried the starfish, but I did, I mean the, uh, <laughs> the, the dollars, the sand dollars, but I really didn't like the dimension. So we went back to the starfish here and I'm going to add some glue. The legs are, um, the center and the legs are at a different dimension. So the center is higher than the rest of it. I'm just going to use the rope to glue onto the starfish tips where I can because I know I'm gonna get a better hold from rope to that little I don't know if that's resin or what these are made out of but they're not they're not real they're um, I believe resin and you can glue it down like that rather than gluing two shiny surfaces onto one another because they're probably gonna pop off I mean use a good glue but mm, just to be on the safe side I have this much rope left from that project. I'm just going to fold it in half. I'm going to cut it after I put some tape on it. Again, the tape is going to keep you from having any frays, and I don't want it to fray out. So I'm just going to wrap that all around the center. And this is going to give me about two 12 inch pieces of rope after it is cut. And I'm going to use my cutters again. Cut this any way that you want to cut it, but I'm going to cut it right in the center so that I get the same amount for both little pieces of rope. If you don't have tape, here's another option for you. Take your hot glue and your protected fingers, poke down in the fibers, and then just twist it in the direction that the rope is already twisted in. And this will kind of help lock that into place. So there are your options for that. I am going to glue this right down on top of the jute ring 
that is already around the neck of this bottle. You see here, it's right on top of that jute. Same thing here, I'm gonna twist that glue section around and then just press it straight down on the jute. These ropes are gonna cling nicely to each other. I'm gonna take some type of trim. This one that I chose came from Dollar Tree. It's beautiful, there are several different colors of this. They're really pretty. It's probably be a good time to stock up because there's a lot on that spool. I'm going to start on the bottom and then wrap around. Now for one thing, I'm trying to cover up the connection between the rope and the jute. And also I want to bring that beautiful striped coloring or design into this project. So I'm just gonna wrap it around and around. And I'm trying to do this in a way that it's not overlapping and I'm wasting my twine. I want it to stack one row on top of the other, but still be thick enough that I get a full coverage so that you don't see a bunch of gaps in there. There are some right now, but we're gonna fix that. Not a problem. Nothing is glued yet, so we can very easily slide those pieces of twine together. So you're gonna see me do that now. Just take my fingernail and just push those together. And then I can continue up and wrap it further if I need to. And it'll sit nicely under the lip of that bottle, which is great because it makes gluing it down so much easier. You can just tuck that edge right under there. Now this is the back side of the bottle. We don't wanna have our starts and finishes on the front because we don't wanna see that, right? We want this to be high end. So we're gonna conceal it by putting it in the back. Although it does blend in fairly nicely because it's, it's very thin. So this is how it looks. We're gonna do the same thing to the other jar. And now we have two of them. So now you can embellish these any way you want. You can put sand in the bottom. You can add, like these are just like some driftwood pieces. You can add driftwood in there. You could add some shells in there, like I'm gonna do on the other jar. You could add table scatter, if that's what you would like to do. You could fill these up with some more of that sea glass. That would be really pretty as well. You could also add a little light like that. So this is what it would look like. Just you know, basically, it's not stuffed full, but just to give you an idea of what it would look like when you put something in it. Starfish hanging light. Okay, are you ready for the main event? Okay, so I'm gonna take some of this thrifted mesh, a little hanging LED lantern or whatever you call it from Dollar Tree. I have some thrifted sea glass and starfish tinsel I have two, two strands of that. I have this hanging basket from Dollar Tree and some satin blossom white chalk paint that we are gonna put on there. Make sure when you buy these that it has the little clear tab in there so that your battery is not run down. All right, once it is painted and dried, only one coat, because I'm not doing anything major with this, it's gonna be covered for the most part. I'm gonna remove the chains, I'm gonna put them aside. I definitely could have done this without my chains, um, but I wanted to hang it to spray it, and this made it easier. So I'm gonna save the chains for another project. I've used my pliers and taken off the hook. Now we're gonna have to have something to hang it with, and we're gonna use jute. You can use rope, jute, the original chains. You can use some type of a garland. You can use whatever you would like. But I'm going to use three strands, all equal length. I'm going to tie a knot in the end, and while the knot is still loose, I'm going to take my hanger and loop it through. You can see that I have all my, my ends out. I'm going to loop it through and pull it tight. You can do a little extra securing with hot glue there if you want to, but I didn't feel the need to do that. This is going to be in. Then I'm going to close that joint there. Now we have our hanging mechanism. We'll be taking those little hooks that came off of the planter and replacing those one on each strand. Easy enough to do, probably didn't have to show you this. The main thing you need to know is that you, in order for it to hang nice and evenly, you're going to make sure that you tie these ropes at the same length. Now you can do that by just making a loose tie in it and then sliding it down to the right length so you get them all the same length. And start off with just a knot. You don't need a double knot. That way you can untie it and fix it if you need to. 
And then I'll have all of mine hanging at the same length. Perfect. And test them against each other and make sure you have the same amount there. And there we go. Now I use my pliers or my cutters and cut off the little extra wires around this center ring because they were snagging when I tried to wrap my mesh around it. So just cut those off and then take some masking tape or duct tape, whatever you want to use. The reason I use masking tape is because of the color. You're not going to be able to see um, a bunch of silver duct tape through my mesh. And you'll know what I mean when I start wrapping it. But I'm going to secure this so that it doesn't snag any of the mesh. And then I have cream colored mesh, which makes it perfect. Use whatever deco mesh you have. I don't recommend anything that's really like fabric or anything unless it's very sheer because you won't be able to see that light that you're gonna put in it. The light is not very bright and I want mine to have just a really pretty glow. So I thought this mesh was perfect for that. Dollar Tree also has a lot of mesh. It didn't take a lot to wrap this. I just cut a section off of there. I didn't even measure it and I looked up with the right length. Tie this on around the center ring and then just begin to wrap this back and forth around your spokes. I tried to make sure, well I say spokes, but you know what I mean. This is not a tire, but the little supports, I guess you would say. Trying to make sure that I had some over each one. That way it was evenly spaced and I didn't have a bunch of overlaps and then a bunch of spots that are sheer. You know, we want this to look high end again, so we're going to keep doing that and wrapping over those sections till we get all the way around. And this was easy to do, but if those little pieces were still in the center of that ring, those metal pieces, that you would it would have been a mess. It just really would have been a mess. So you can just push this over those little um, areas where you hook. It'll just go right over it. And then around, and look at that. I had just enough. And this will be the back. I'm going to make it the back. So I had some little frayed ends here. It's not a big deal. You can trim that off. All those little pieces that are sticking out. I'm just going to trim that down and make it look nice and neat. Now, I'm going to make that the back of it. And nobody will know. And this is what it's going to look like when you have it wrapped around with your nice mesh. I'm going to layer this with a piece of that... Um, nautical netting. I don't think I'm getting the word right, but you know what I mean. You get that at Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just going to cut a tiny section out, spread it out, and layer it over the top. You can skip this part if that's not your thing, but I like the layering. I like it. Kind of looks like a jellyfish, doesn't it? I'm trying to get these little grids um, evenly spaced so that I can add some hot glue and keep them from falling off. I don't want it to fall off. Trying to add just a little bit and then press it together with my fingers and then add onto sections like around the metal where I can. That way it has something to hold on to besides just the mesh. So that's what I'm doing, just tacking that down all over. Now to switch the angle up for you, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with this gorgeous tinsel. I'm looking at this first off to see how I want this to stretch out. And I think the best way to apply this is to make sure that there's a starfish on every one of those little cross sections. Because I'll be gluing that starfish straight down onto another piece of something solid like the metal. It's gonna help hold the mesh in place. You can see I'm holding it right on there. Give it a good little minute there to, to dry. And then I'm gonna pull it around and put the next one down. Glue it down on that metal. If you don't have a piece of garland that has all of these bigger sections and smaller sections, you don't even have to use this process. You can just wrap your garland around and glue it any way that you want. But I do recommend that you put it on metal. Look at this. Is this not the cutest little thing? Oh my gosh. Okay, so now we're gonna put the hanger back on. But first, we need to cover up this ugly white hanger. So I'm going to take my jute, tie it around the knot from our little hanging sections here, and just slide it up. You tie this on however you want to. 
I'm just going to trim that little tail off of there and then begin to wrap it around the entire hook. I'm going to cover this whole thing up. Add a little bit of glue where you need it. Keep sliding it down and then just cover that whole thing up. See, even when I make an attempt to not talk, I feel like I should be talking. So let's fill in the space with a little happiness, right? So what's bringing you joy today? This craft is bringing me joy today. Look how easy that is. Little glue on the end, twist it, cut it off. Then any little extra little piece here, you can just see how I wrap it on there in the direction it's going in. That'll help seal off those little frays and then you can cut that little tip right off and you got the perfect hook. Besides, I love talking to you guys. I like, like talking to you, I just do. All right, we're gonna add these back on. I'm gonna clip it, one to each section. And then, so that's easy to do making sure that it is where it needs to be and I'm going to push that hook through the hole here because we're going to flip it over and now this is the top of our light right so I know that I'm going to put this inside because it won't fit if you do it upside down and you try to push it through there it won't fit that way so we're going to try something different I'm going to sit it on top of a can that way I can very easily fix this part I'm going to make sure that my hanging pieces are exactly where they need to be because we're going to be using glue and you can't move them after that. So making sure they're in the right spot, making sure I have my light where I want it. I'm just going to add some hot glue, dibble dabble here and there, and then press it down in the middle. Then I can turn. Look how cute. Now for the top, I left mine open for now, but you can make a flap with a piece of ribbon, whatever you want to use, glue two sides down, and then that way you can fold it open when you get ready to turn your light on and off. I'm just going to take the hairs off of this hook. I don't recommend you do this if you're afraid to do it. Um, you always need to, to use safety, of course, first. This is not for children. My videos are for grown-ups. Perfect. All right, now here is our overview of our little items. I staged them for you. First without the candles, and then in a moment I'll have the candles on. I've changed up my backdrop. I've changed some things in my craft room. I've gotten more organized, and it's making these processes so much easier. Here's our lantern. You saw the seahorse sign. My little Adirondack chair there I got from the thrift store. Here are our candles, if you like that look. Look at our lamp. Our little hanging light. Ugh, I believe in you and I know you can do this. I hope that this video has inspired you to create some things without having to spend a ton of money. Subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this video and if you like to save money but still creating works of art like this. Take pride in what you do. We all have craftiness within us. We just gotta believe in ourselves, right? Believe in ourselves and draw on that power. I thank you so very much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.